I don't know about you, but I really like small boats. They're really direct and engaging with the water, and it's a bit like sailing a big dinghy. So I was excited today that we get to come and sail the smallest boat in the Arcona range, uh, and this is the 345, and we've come down to the Western Solent, sailing out of Lymington to have a go today. It wasn't looking like much of a day, but we've got 10 knots of wind and flat water, and we're actually having a great sail, so let's have a look. The Arcona 345 is a performance cruiser or a cruiser racer. It's easy to be off put by that. Nobody wants to be cruising on a boat that's really twitchy and sensitive. But that's a long way from what this boat is actually all about. She's really nice to sail, as you'd expect from an Arcona. We tested the 340 10 years ago for Yachting Monthly and loved it then. And this boat's a development of that and she's just a bit more refined uh, and a few sort of design tweaks that have uh, added, added some quite nice developments to her really. But from a performance point of view, I mean, we're sailing upwind now at uh, 30 degrees to the apparent wind with a little bit more breeze, we could probably get a bit higher, 28 degrees. And we're sailing at four and a half knots in eight knots of wind, eight and a half knots of wind true. Um, and that's punching into the tide as well. So, and on the other tack, a minute ago, we had a couple of gusts and we got up to about five and a half, 5.6 knots at a similar angle to the wind. So she sails upwind really well and she'll outsail almost anything else out on the water. On the helm, she's really nice to sail. Um, and one of the, the sort of the hallmarks of an Arcona um, is, balance on the helm and getting the boat set up properly and then she's just really light to steer so that she's not twitchy and difficult to get into the groove but you settle into a groove and you could imagine spending a, a decent watch helming by hand or letting an autopilot get on with it without worrying too much about whether she was going to lose it. You can push these boats hard, you can keep them over canvassed and I haven't yet managed to make an Arcona lose her grip on the water. Um, I mean, we're not going to do that in 10 knots of wind today, but if you over canvas her, get things a little bit wrong, she's not going to bite your hand off. We're sailing in about 10 knots of true wind today, um, and we're going upwind at the moment. So I've got, just having a look, I've got 12, 11 or 12 knots over the deck, apparent wind speed, and we're doing 5 to 5.2 knots upwind. We're close hauled on 30 degrees to the apparent wind angle. Um, so that's pretty weatherly. We had the Code Zero up earlier, which is a lovely sail. And at 60 degrees to the wind, uh, we actually topped out at 8.2 knots in 10, 11 knots of wind true. So that was about 12 or 13 knots apparent once we were up to speed. So for a small boat, she really shifts. If you want a boat to sail well, um, it needs to be light and it needs to be stiff, ideally. Um, and the Arcona has achieved that um, partly with the hull construction. So it's a cord construction using 20 millimeter Divinacell foam core. And it uses vacuum infusion to make sure that it gets just the right amount of vinyl ester resin through the whole structure so that it's really strong, but without too much extra weight. Then to spread some of the keel loads, obviously, so this boat's got a 1.9 meter keel um, and that's completely lead, fully lead. So you've got a really low center of gravity um, and then a, a keel stepped mast. And to spread all of the loads of that, there's a, a galvanized steel beam that comes up from the keel that's sort of built into the matrix of the hull. And it comes down and it takes the shroud bases, which are fully outboard, but it just means that the, the loads for the mast and the rig are, are really well handled. It doesn't get passed through the fiberglass and there's basically no flex in it. So any gusts of wind, any healing moment, 
it doesn't flex the boat, it just turns it into forwards drive. Right, so the helming position is, uh, is well laid out. Um, the 345 um, has twin wheels where the predecessor of the 340 had a single wheel. So that means you can sit right out board and you've got a nice walk through here, giving you access to the stern. Uh, it's also created space for a full width main sheet traveller. And you'll notice, well, you might notice that they've done away with their, there used to be on the 340, some little lockers here that also served as seats for the wheels. In reality, actually just sitting outboard is perfectly comfortable. And you've got some foot chocks there if you're on the windward side. Uh, and it gives you plenty of space to sit and move around. I've got the main sheet just forward here. So if I want to trim the main sheet on, I can give it a little bit there. I can adjust the traveller here. And then I do need to just come round the wheel if I need to adjust the jib sheet. But that's pretty easy to do. Um, at the moment, this boat hasn't got the chart plotters fitted. But normally, and this is going to be fitted on this boat, there will be a chart plotter pod with instruments there. As it is, there's four instrument heads just above the companionway. And I can see those all really clearly along with the steering compass. Uh, I've got engine controls down here. And I've also got the backstay just within easy reach here. You've got a 48 to 1 cascade backstay. Um, yeah, so I've got nothing sort of obstructing my view forwards. I can see 360 degrees around the boat. We're only helming, sort of healing sort of 10 or 15 degrees at the moment. So, um, yeah, it all works really nicely. Right, so the cockpit's got a pretty simple, straightforward, nice and clean layout. You've got benches on either side. Uh, one little point that I noticed is that you can brace nice and easily here if you're heeling at the forward end of the cockpit, but the seats get further apart at the aft end. Um, and it'll, on some of the bigger Arconas, there's a foot shock down the middle so that you can just rest. It'd be quite nice to have a little bit of teak on the, on the cockpit sole here just to give you a bit of bracing there would be good. Other than that, uh, you've got uh, two main winches, so that's the main sheet winches, which is a Harkin size 40, and the primary winches for the Genoa and the Code Zero is a 46 speed self tailor. And then you've got size 40 for the halyard winches, um, and this boat has the option of an electric winch um, for the main halyard. But you've also got the halyard deflectors so that you can bring so this is the jib halyard. I can bring that up onto the windward side, put that on, and then give us a bit more jib tension there without any sweat or effort at all, which is very nice. And then you can see we've got a bank of instruments just above the companionway hatch. And all of the halyards are led aft here, and they emerge inside the spray hood, which is down at the moment. That folds up and you have a nice cosy spray hood. And these all come aft through tunnels under the deck so that the deck's got really nice clear lines as well. Simple washboards, just slip up, put in. At the moment, this boat hasn't got any um, halyard um, bags. You might want to fit those or little bins for your winch handles, that kind of thing. The bigger Arconas all have um, rope bins for the halyard tails that come down here. This boat doesn't have it. Um, it's one of the few things that this boat doesn't have that the, um, the bigger Arconas do. And actually, on a lot of small boats with babies in the range, you might expect to see lots of corners being cut. And there's basically no evidence of that on this boat. This is built to exactly the same standard as all of the bigger boats, the 385, the 415, 465. Um, so she's finished to a really nice spec, as you can see with all this deck gear. We've got really calm conditions today, so let's just go and have a look on deck while we're sailing upwind. Stepping over the combings, you've got nice wide side decks here, so that's secure. You can hold on to the spray hood as you're coming around here. And then the coach roof handles come quite a long, nice long way aft, and they go forwards to the shrouds, so it's pretty secure moving around. You can see we've got these nice flush windows. There's an opening hatch there. Uh, that's above the, uh, in the heads and you've got one on the other side for the galley. 
Moving forward, you can see we've got a German main sheet system. So that's led aft to the cockpit winch just ahead of the, um, just ahead of the helm. All of the shrouds are led down to the uh, tow rail. So you've got a good clear side deck to come through, good base for the mast. And on this boat, you've got a, a tapered Selden mast twin spreader rig. Um, it's fractional, so you're on about nine tenths fractional with a really powerful backstay. So you can put a bit of bend in the mast, flatten the mainsail. The jib comes aft to these tracks here. 104% overlap and then you've also got we can see it better on the other side we'll have a look in a second but you've got the uh, jib sheet tweakers so while you can move the jib cars forward and aft you can also change the sheeting angle outboard or inboard with those so that just gives you a bit more control to get the sails set up just how you want them. The foot of the mast you can see that the mast is um, keel stepped so it comes through the deck gator here that's a little sort of uh, indicator that she's a, a sort of a reasonably performance orientated boat rather than a deck step mast. Just makes the whole rig a bit stiffer. Um, you've got a nice hatch going down into the saloon there and then two proper Doré vents so you get really good ventilation below. Uh, that's the halyard for the Code Zero which we've put away now. Um, but that just rigs off the bow sprit. Well, it's not a bow sprit, it's the um, bow roller for the anchor. So we'll have a look at that now as well. You've got a good clear foredeck here for, for working, for dropping sails and that kind of thing. You can see that you've got below deck furling here, which means that you can have the foot for the Genoa nice and close to the deck, which is a bit more efficient. And then you've just got this stainless steel bow roller with an attachment point there for any off-wind sails, Code Zeros or Genoas that you want, Genicas that you want to fly from there. And the anchor locker, you've got space for a couple of fenders up forward. The rest of ours are in the um, cockpit. You've got an electric windlass in there with a remote. And you'll notice at the moment they've got a, a, a gas bottle in there. That's because the gas bottle aft has space for one bottle, but not a spare. Um, so this is, this is where the spare gas bottle has to go. Down below, uh, you've got a really good, uh, sensible, seaworthy layout. We've got a, an L-shaped galley to port. We're on a 34 footer, so it's not enormous, but you've got a bit of work surface space. You've got a two burner hob, um, and you've got a nice big fridge here with a couple of baskets that goes all the way outboard. You've got a double sink. And actually for a boat of this size, you've got loads of stowage above the work surface. Below the work surface, got a whole set of drawers here, hand cupboard underneath, and then there's a bin in here as well. Over on starboard side, we've got the heads. Uh, this is a two cabin boat. There's no option for a third cabin or on the starboard aft side. Uh, that means that you get a really nice big cockpit locker as we saw, and then you've also got a really good um, heads in here. It's got a separate shower area um, and you can step over that quite easily into the uh, toilet and sink area and you can have a look in there in a minute and there's a drying locker um, and there's also um, internal access to the cockpit locker at the aft end. Coming forwards you're straight down to um, the chart table. In the old 340 that was forward facing so you lost, you didn't get a proper uh, settee on starboard side. Now you get a full settee on this side which is more than long enough to sleep on and you've got an aft facing chart table and as you can see that's big enough for an Admiralty folio chart which is a big tick and there's space to store your folio inside here as well. You've got extra stowage underneath which is really useful for tools and instrument covers and that kind of thing. We've got a chart plotter mounted here, a uh, really cool little Vespa Cortex, which is uh, an all-in-one handheld VHF, AIS, anchor watch, remote monitoring, does all that kind of stuff. And then we've got the electrics panel here. And as you can see, that's really neatly 
fitted out and finished, so it's pretty obvious what's what and fairly easy to maintain if there's any problems. Then you come forward into the saloon area. Now one of the other changes is the port berth has turned into C-shaped seating, which is really nice. It's just a bit more uh, comfortable. You can put your feet up when you're sitting there uh, and you can sit around the table a bit more rather than two sides facing each other. So I really like that change to the layout. In the base of the table, you've got bottle stowage and glasses stowage. This does sit immediately over where the keel bolts are, so if you wanted to inspect the keel bolt, you would have to lift the sole boards up, which isn't ideal, but there is access here. And then you can actually see, if you look into here, you've got the steel girder, which forms the, the sort of the, the matrix, keel matrix, and that's all one single part with the big girder that takes the weight of the mast and takes the load of the shrouds uh, which come down there and that's all spread through that galvanized steel girder which means that this boat is really stiff. Table folds up into a good wide table, little props to slide that up and the same happens on the other side. So you've got a really nice table and it's got nice fiddles around it. So if you're rolling a bit it doesn't have fiddles around the central section, so you can't use this as a, a dumping area when you're at sea. But that's probably no bad thing. Under this seat, uh, you've got stowage behind the settee. There we go. And underneath, there's loads of stowage as well. So plenty of stowage space there, as well as lockers, outboard, VHF radios, all your sewing kit, that kind of stuff as well as a bookshelf. So actually this is really practical, sensible uh, layout for at sea and I could imagine being very comfortable living on here for a longer coastal cruise. 345 has added in these square huddle windows in line with the rest of the Arcona fleet. So uh, that gives you quite a lot of extra light down below but also when you're sitting in the saloon you can see out and enjoy the view a little bit. Reading lights have been moved slightly so they don't bump into where your head is and all of these have got USB charging ports so wherever you're sitting you can be plugged in and connected which is so important these days. Um, coming forward you'll notice one of the downsides of Arcona's, if you see it that way, is that they've got lower freeboard and these really sleek coach roofs which mean that they're great to sail, they look lovely um, and there's nothing getting in the way of the sailing experience but you do lose a bit of headroom here. I'm just over six foot and I just have to bend slightly. It's not a big problem, there's loads of standing headroom in the galley and in the heads, uh, but you do lose the height as you come forward. And then you come into the uh, what's probably the owner's cabin, if you don't go for the uh, port aft cabin. You've got a good wide uh, V-berth, plenty of space at the far end so your feet don't bump into your partners. And then there's a little uh, dressing seat here, which is nice and shelved lockers on that side and hanging locker space behind the door on the other side. Uh, and you've got a big opening hatch there, lots of ventilation and shelves down the side, so you've got plenty of space to put, put stuff when you're cruising. Lastly, there's the port aft cabin uh, in here, which has got the biggest berth on board. Um, it's over two metres long and over two metres wide. Um, with almost no space going to the engine compartment, so it's a really good square berth in there. And you've just got the one hanging locker space uh, to on, on the outboard side and a shelf all the way along, and then a reading light on either side. So that's a good big cabin, and uh, this one's also got a, an opening hatch as well. And ventilation has been improved on this boat, just while I'm thinking about it, because we've got the main hatch above, but on this boat they've added the... Um, opening hatch above the galley so obviously as you're cooking any smells and heat can go out of there which is another change from the 340. So we're just back in off the water um, having had our test sail on the 345. We also had the chance to spend a night on her a little while ago so we've really given her a proper sail and she's a lovely boat to stay on board and to sail. The sailing experience is really enjoyable She's not a big boat, which means that it's all more direct and you're closer to the water. As you'd expect with an Arcona, the helm is beautifully light and balanced and you can really get her in the groove upwind. She's 
described as a performance cruiser, which some might find off-putting, but actually she's a really forgiving boat to sail. It's quite easy to get her in the groove upwind. And the boats that we came across on the water today, we easily outsailed them, pointing higher and sailing faster, um, which is always enjoyable. In terms of the 345 being an update on the 340 that we tested 10 years ago, ostensibly it's the same boat, but this is a real improvement. Some of the cockpit layout uh, makes it a better sailing boat. There's more sail area. The cockpit, the, sorry, the cabin is more comfortable. You've got a bit more space with how that's arranged. And the other thing is that they've neatened up some of the rough edges that we found. So this has built absolutely to a premium quality, exactly as you would see on the larger Arcona boats. And that's really impressive on a boat of this size. And there are very few performance cruisers, cruiser racers, whatever you want to call them, um, in this size range of 34 foot. So she's fairly unique in the market. In terms of what she costs, she doesn't come cheap and the price is reasonably punchy. Um, so base price in British sterling pounds, um, she's £195,000 list price. Once you've added on all of your options, tax, um, VAT, sales, delivery, commissioning, all of that, um, you get to £325,000, give or take a bit, um, and that sale away price. But if you know what you're looking for and you're looking for a really good sailing boat that will be a good coastal cruiser as well, then this could be just the ticket. Mm -hmm.